Well, you know, I, I asked CJ about that the other day. He says his favorite guy to throw to is Tavon because he just throws it as far as he can, and he hopes that he doesn't underthrow him. <laughs> I saw, that's exactly what he said. He said he can't outthrow him. There's no way in the world. Uh, Roman, thanks a lot for coming on. You know, we look forward to you, and I know you're looking forward to the entire season. Uh, I think you'll have a great time in College Park. It's uh, the uh, guys from uh, the SID down and – all the guys take great care of you, and uh, I've only heard some good things about you, so I look forward to meeting you. All right, have a good night, have a good day, and uh, we'll see you at the game later on. All right, uh, again, this show is being taped on Wednesday night, so, uh, you know, but we know what's going on. Wayne, before we go to the break, tell everybody about Viner Consulting. Hey, Viner Consulting is the place to turn if you have a small business that needs to get on the internet, needs to work on your e-commerce, broaden your reach and make more money. We can help you with great systems from NCR and Lenovo. We can help you with marketing, doing things like webcasts, improving your actual e-commerce system, your inventory systems. So give me a call. We can help you out. You can reach just at 301-251-2900 or on the internet at makeyourcompanywork.com. That's makeyourcompanywork.com. This is Wayne Viner. For Bruce Posner, you're listening to Viner Consulting Turp Talk on 1580 CBS Sports Radio in the nation's capital. Okay, well, looking out there at YouTube land, uh, we're back. A little bit of snacks. Trip to the Pepsi machine. It's about time to get this uh, second segment of the show rolling. Wait a minute, is, he, uh, is that working? Well, it's working. It's on. We just... Uh, Did we have that first segment? Yeah, but I think we're going to edit out... Really, I think we're going to edit out the first segment because, oh. because we couldn't get Roman Stubbs from the Washington Post hooked up to the audio that goes to the machine, so okay. nobody would have heard. won't put on, though. No, we'll just have to edit that part out and uh, continue on. Okay. Okay. You got Tish here, Ohio State Buckeye, who you can't really see on the camera, except her hand just popped. There she is. Oh, that's my <laughs> that, that was it. No. Don't right. You ready to get rolling yeah. in uh, segment two? Yeah, ready. All right, let's go. All right. Back here on segment two of. Let me start recording. Start again. <laughs> Back here on segment two of Viner Consulting Turp Talk. We are around the horn a little bit on Terps. Uh, Coach Tillman hired J.L. Repper. It's official now. He's the uh, He was the offensive coordinator at Navy. Uh, Coach Tillman spoke tremendously highly of the guy right. as a mentor, a coach, and that just is a good guy, really knows his lacrosse. And uh, Jesse Bernhardt heads to Rutgers. With a assistant really? coach job, yeah. That one I did not know. Hey, but uh, for those who, who love the Terps like we do, Dustin Clark was on the Wednesday edition in Baltimore of Terp Talk. You can go up on the terptalk.com website and go back to Wednesday or check that out on Wayne Terp. Dustin talked for about 20 minutes about Terp basketball and just about being in College Park. Yeah, he really loves it. He really loves going to the games or whatever. And another Terp had a big game, actually two ex-Terps, Huge game for the Denver Outlaws as they won the MLL title. And Drew Snyder, my man Drew, yeah. got the winning goal with 40 seconds left after Jeremy Sieverts got a two-point goal to tie it up with about two minutes. So how do you get a two-point goal? It's how far away you shoot? There's a restrict. There's a line, mm -hmm. a circular line. If you shoot from behind that line and score, it's two points. And you don't see that much, although I saw that, I think, in the championship game last year. Somebody got a two-point Yeah, goal. you don't see it too often because the goalies are too good. Right. But, you know, you put enough smoke on the ball that sometimes it gets through. Well, other Terps having a big week, according to intern Mason. D.J. Adams, the former Terp tailback, wore number 10 on the end of the Frigian era. Uh, he's still with the Dallas Cowboys. And Sean Hill, a major Sean of the Hill. Past. Right. That's what I wanted to bring up. Sean Hill will be the starting quarterback for the St. Louis Rams as uh, Bradford went down in an exhibition game, which says enough right there. Again. Right. And so he looked, he's out for the year. Out for the year. Out for the year. 
and Sean Hill takes over. Sean has had a pretty good backup NFL career. Yeah, he was a Detroit Lion for the longest time. I'll never forget, I went out to, uh, the Ravens were playing out in San Francisco, and... Right, I thought he should have been the starting quarterback in well, San Fran. I forgot who the quarterback was, but all of a sudden I started hearing the fans saying, we want Hill. Was it we Tim want... Rattay, or I was don't... it Alex Smith? Alex Smith. And they, no, it wasn't Alex Smith, it was Tim Rattay. And they were chanting for Hill, and I said, who, who are you talking about Hill? They yeah. said, Sean Hill. I said, Sean Hill... By Sean Hill, right. and uh, he he got in for a little bit, a little bit of a run. He was a backup quarterback at uh, Detroit, got uh, some run there yeah. with injuries, and he's just uh, he took, hangs around. Took the Terps to the Orange Bowl. Yeah, did he go to Hutchinson Junior College in Kansas? Uh, yeah, you got me on that one, Wayne. I, I think he did. Well, anyhow, uh, only you would know that. <laughs> All right, pull, yeah, pulling stuff out of thin air here. Speaking of the speaking of the Ravens. Which I wasn't, but right. thank you for well, bringing that up. Speaking of the Ravens, uh, your Redskins didn't look so great the other night. No, uh, same problems they had when I saw them against Cleveland. Uh, just the offense, bad. And if they're going to run that offense, which uh, by now you've all seen the tape from uh, Thursday night against the Bucks, but you're not going to see anything particularly different till they take the wrapper off of this new offense and it goes back to an option look for RG. It's the only way this is going to work out. But uh, you know, I just I didn't think RG RG three had the greatest game. No, if he keeps playing like that, we're just gonna call him Bob. Yeah. Well, eventually, yeah. If he keeps playing like that, you could see some uh, more run of Kirk Cousins, and of course, on the other hand, the Nationals look look <coughs> phenomenal. Yeah, and that's just <laughs> finding ways to win and more ways to win. I'm getting ready. I hope for a Beltway to Beltway World Series. Um, but you never can tell. Uh, the the depth of that team, though, is is starting to be amazing. Everybody they bring in contributes a lot like the Orioles. Still a first-place Baltimore Orioles, so hopefully we get that Beltway World Series. As you said, probably before, we'll see a Super Bowl between the Ravens and the Redskins. <clears throat> of course, we take the show on Wednesday. Uh, field hockey teams had their first game yesterday against UMass. Soccer teams playing Sunday, Monday night. It's Monday night. I think it's Coastal Carolina. Right. And I think they're ranked number 13, so it's 2 versus 13 or 17. And, yeah, you come out Sunday, uh, Monday night, 7 o'clock, uh, see Sasha's gang. I'm I looking. think they're on the road against Louisville, though. Now, Louisville, uh, pretty sure they're on the road Saturday. It's, it's this week. It's Louisville. And then I guess it's next week. They've got Coastal Carolina. No, that's Monday is Coastal Carolina. Definitely Labor Day. Well, you night. know what? We'll check that and update you in the third segment of uh, when the... Yeah, but I might I might actually go to that game Monday night. Cause yeah, I'd like to go. There's not much going on on Monday night. No, but, and uh, I'm sure the crew's going to be out there. You know, school, everybody will be back. School starts on Tuesday. But, the, of course, the big news, at least to me, other than the fact there's actually a football game, is Maryland's put money into Bird Stadium. And they repainted... They got the Big Ten flags up over the, the very high upper deck. Uh, they've got a ribbon board. They have two ribbon boards. 39,000 tickets sold for the first game. Yeah, do you think everybody's going to show up, or do you think that's just part of the fact that you had to buy the JMU tickets to play? I don't want Tish to get too excited, but you got to buy JMU tickets to get the Ohio State tickets. Well, that was wise, but uh, I know they won't, will show up. You know why? Because my wife said, I want to go Saturday. Really? Right. And uh, she's excited for this season. And she hasn't been in the past, not because, you know, you and me go to every game. Every game. Right. But the average fan, yeah. when when your games are against Wake Forest and Duke and just mediocre non-football type schools. BC. Right, BC. has always been a, a, such a hard ticket to sell. Right. Well, let me tell you something. It's old news. But people are excited for this year. Well, I told Randy when he was on the show last week. Right. I said that I have never seen the excitement for the bit for football like it is this year. Why? Because they're playing a major schedule, and that's the bottom line. How they're going to do, we're going to find out. But they're playing a major schedule where probably out of the 12 games, seven of them, seven of them draw somewhat national attention, and uh, you know certainly West Virginia and Syracuse and 
Ohio State, Michigan State, Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa. Penn State. All right, Penn State. Iowa, you said We're, Iowa. we got right. Rutgers. Well, Indiana, Rutgers might not, it? yeah, but Indiana might not. But those other eight games I just mentioned right. will. Yeah. You know, and, oh, absolutely. Especially if Maryland wins their fair share. Now, a lot of people have gotten on the Maryland bandwagon. We've been on that wagon a bit already since the spring till now. So this who was week, the guy who predicted a win over Florida State last year? That, that could have been me. I think it was you. Yeah, I got that written down. Right. Yeah, yeah, I'm never me. gonna get to live that down. But look, we only lost by 63. I think it was close to the score indicated. Yeah. Well, um, you know that they got up. You got to play every game, without question. As, <clears throat> that's why this. <laughs> that's why the. All right, Malco, but that's why. That's why you play the game because you don't know what's gonna. happen. Happened. You don't know. But and when the ball hit the field goal up, upright oh, last God. year. That was two years ago when right. Craddock banged the upright against NC State. No, that was last year against Florida State. Oh. The Terps were down 7 nothing. Yep. Craddock had a 50-yard field goal. Almost. And it, it hit, the, uh, hit the left upright, bounced away. Katie barred the door. That was it. Game was over. It was over quickly. Right. Very and quickly. CJ got uh, pummeled, and that was that. And was that, that wasn't called. No, right. no, that wasn't. Uh, and the helmet to the chest was not called. No, but they got in Domerkan suit for the same hit last week in a preseason Speaking game. Speaking of the hits, what about this guy, Merriweather? Look, uh, guys. Two-game suspension, he's appealing it from what I understand. And they might get it down to one game, but he, that's the, guy, the way the guy plays. And he's played that way the whole time. He's was on the Redskins last year, only played in, I believe he played like six quarters of football between being injured and got four penalties for hitting with his head. He goes to the preseason game last week against the Ravens. He knocks Pierce out, but they don't call that one. They get him on a hit on Torrey Smith that I didn't think was nearly as bad as the one that they did. Oh, no, they hit on Torrey Smith. I thought it was horrible. I thought the Pierce hit was worse. Well, take your pick. Well, but the guy, you know what? That's over with. You know, Bernard Pollard, the way he hits, it's done. You know, I think he changed his ways a little bit. And if this guy doesn't change his ways and does it again, yeah. he's gone. It's the sixth major infraction he's had since they put these. And I'll tell you how he's going to get going. He's not going to go. He's not going to be thrown out by the league. Gruden's going to get rid of him. All right, Gruden was really upset well, and said he was going to suspend them if nothing else happened. Well, you keep giving up 15-yard penalties, and most of them are needless. It's these aren't game-saving hits. That Pollard, the best Pollard hit that I remember. Not this is Ravens talk here. Is he wiped out somebody from the Patriots in that championship? The running back. Right? Yeah, he, he wiped them out. And he wiked out and the guy West, and That was that was that. He wiped out Wes Welker a few times as well. Yeah. But uh, speaking of which, Wes Welker concussion should again. He play again? No. I mean, you know, I, I just probably not. But it's not up to us. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, so Wayne, give me a prediction of the football game. What do you see the score as? Well, I think when you put a bunch of guys who never played together which is what JMU has, these nine D1 transfers down a level, a brand-new coach. I think it's a lot harder to put a team together in the first game, so I think Maryland's actually going to be able to exert their will. So I'm going I'm, – I did this uh, the other day. I'm going to say again, 53-7. to seven. You're too strong there. I think 38-13, like I said, I think it will be a little bit tighter. JMU will hang around, but eventually – uh, CJ will find who's ever not double team right. between Tavon, Stefan, and Dion. How's that? That, that should be like a singing group. Tavon, yeah, right. It's, Stephon, it's like, oh, I can't remember. Boys to Men was Donnie, Bobby, Ricky, and Mike. Yeah. Right in the Jacksons. Yeah. <laughs> they could, like, but, dress up. See, if I was promoting the team, I'd put them in tuxedos. Right. Have them singing, you right. know, the, the, the posse or whatever. Right, right. whatever. Name. Um, it was New Edition. It was New Edition, not Boys to Men. I'm sorry. I... Uh, by 80s reference, a bit off target. Um, the big thing about double teaming all these receivers and being worried, nonstop worried that somebody's going to blow by you, is that usually opens up the running game, even if you don't really get to throw the ball that deep. So I wouldn't be surprised if it wasn't that we ended up with a couple hundred yards. They decide they weren't going to let Dion and Stefan beat us, and they have to drop back and they go to man coverage and follow those receivers down the field, and we get to run all over the place. So there's different ways these weapons. Uh, can be used, and some of them might be more of a decoy. I mean, the first time you put Tavon Jacobs out there, who, as Roman said, might be the fastest turf, two guys would be looking at him. Uh, speaking of two guys, as we go to the break here, two guys who wore turps in 2012, Titus Till, who played safety for Maryland, I think he wore number 27, and
and a fellow named Jeremiah Wilson, who was a cornerback, wore 21. Uh, he's also wearing 21 for the Dukes. They both make their debut, along with the quarterback who played a bit for Georgia Tech last year. So James Madison has some D1 or former D1 players, and you're probably going to say if they were meant to be in D1, they'd probably still be in D1. So there's a reason you end up uh, transferring down a level. Transfers. Transfers. Practice. Hey, it's not that Maryland hasn't had their share of transfers. You put it together, an entire basketball team out of the transfers. No, not the Maryland. entire, but enough of them. All right, this is Bruce Posner. You're listening to Viner Consulting Turf Talk. We'll be back in a few minutes on CBS Sports Radio, 1580. Davis hits a home run, solo, Hi, down guys, through the Freddy. one. Hi, Freddie. This is your favorite hey. person in the world. This is Tish. Well, this is Tish getting Freddie ready to go on air <laughs> for segment three. He's warming him up. Yeah. All right, I'm going to go ahead and put you on hold, and then we will have so, a lovely segment with you, okay? So we'll be back right. live. Here's the radio show on 1580 CBS Sports Radio. Gets rolling again on this Terp Saturday. Maryland, JMU later today. And I'll go into why I said uh, I'm looking forward to my big pretzel before we get off the air here. All right. Uh, all right. One second. I just want to see what time it is. Eight o'clock. So we got the eight ten. Yeah, it's eight o'clock. You have till eight ten. Okay. All right. Ready? Is right. Freddie on? You should be able to hear him. Freddie's there. All right. Ready? One, yep. two, three. And Say when. When. All right. We're back on segment three of Viner Consulting uh, Turp Talk and Wayne. Today marks your third anniversary with uh, the radio my show? 105th week on the radio, which is the start of the third year. So I finished my second season. And first of all, I want to thank you for, for doing this. I actually appreciate the opportunity to, to be here and to share my terpdom. And Freddie, you know, you've been a great support in two years of doing this. And uh, it, it just to mark the anniversary, it's every first game of the football season. Oh, you're season. beginning to sound like it's a swan song. Oh, no, yeah, no, yeah. I'm not. In fact, I'm really impressed that we got a new website since we've been here. Um, you added the In the Nest show, the NFL show, on Sunday. Um, we were, have a Turp Talk store. If you go up on turptalk.com, you can actually buy Turp Talk gear like this golf shirt I have on. We've got our YouTube, all those videos and the... 80 days that people have watched. People have watched our Turp Talk videos for 80 total days. So that's a lot of watching. And then we have the live show that just debuted for this football season that's on YouTube. So a lot has happened. Yeah, and of course we always have Freddie from Boca. Freddie, welcome in tonight. Good morning, gentlemen. Of course it's 8 o'clock in the morning and I'm saying at night because <laughs> we're tape recording this show a few days in advance. Freddie, let's get your take uh Get your take on the game Saturday, JMU. I know none of us know much about it except they got a bunch of uh, D1 transfers, but uh, this is probably it for that for the uh, Terrapins in somewhat a game where they'll be a big favorite to win. Yeah, well, you know, it, it, it doesn't to me serve any real purpose playing a team like this other than helping uh, James Madison uh, get a nice check to help their athletic program because if Maryland doesn't win big, you have questions like how come they can't beat a team like this, and if it, somehow, you know, James Madison can win the game or make it really close, that's to put Maryland in a good light. I would much prefer them scheduling, you know, like there's a Clemson-South Carolina game today, I mean, going out of conference, playing a really good team. But uh, I love to see him play Navy. I, I tend to agree with that a little bit. I think it's almost like a warm-up game, but there's nothing to gain by this win. If you lose this game, it's like it's death, right? There's nothing to gain, everything to lose. Right, and if you win the game, everybody says, well, who'd you beat? Big deal, so, you know. As you said uh, a great first game. How about Navy and Ohio State and Baltimore at noon today? That's a big game. That, you know, can Navy – oh, Navy will probably get killed. I don't think they could stop Ohio State. Ohio State's too big, too strong. 
But then again, Navy throws something at you that nobody sees. Yeah, Navy. Finds Tish, you going to that game? Ohio State has a quarterback that's never, you know, it's a big game for him. He's, he's taking a place of potential All-American. Certainly coming to uh, Washington to FedEx Field to play Navy is no picnic. For, I think it's, a, I think it's an M&T Bank. Well, I'm sorry, M&T Bank is no picnic for Ohio State. You don't State. want to get them in a car with Bruce and go have to, get, have to go someplace in Fort because you're probably not going to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Freddie. Thank you. Uh, that's why they invented GPS. I even get lost on the golf course, right, Freddie? You, you have a tendency of uh, getting a little off the course, so to speak. Well, yeah. one of the things, Freddie, when you get up here and get to a game, if you ever leave the uh, friendly confines of Boca and join Bruce and me for a turf game, is that we've got some improved food out there. And one of the things I'm looking for is having somebody to share the giant crab stuffed pretzel. I hear it feeds four. They put a salad bar in. You can go get a salad at Bird Stadium and even the Maryland Dairy. The on-campus dairy's got their own little hut there. Uh, well, that place should get real busy because the dairy was great. That's a, that's a, that's a winner. Uh, that's for sure. They have pretzel. I think they call it the fridge, but it's a little bizarre. <laughs> no, probably not this year. Yeah. <laughs> the fridge is assistant coach over at Rutgers. Yeah. Yeah, he, he's the offensive coordinator. Yeah. And I'm looking forward to seeing him back in College Park, even though you got to root against him. But it took him, what did it take, three full seasons for him to get another D1 job? Well, I don't know how hard he was pursuing it. You know, yeah, maybe think, all of a sudden he started to, but I we don't have that answer. But, you know, I'm sure he'll be ready for the Maryland game, last game of the year, and uh, could be a big game for both teams. Could be that game where they're trying to get win number seven, both teams. Right. So, uh We'll take that as it, as it may. All right, Freddie, let's talk hoops for a few minutes, all right? Then uh, had Dustin Clark on the show in Baltimore the other day. and Well, I like Dustin because he, he is a great Terp. He goes to all the games. He's one of the few coaches that you see every place. The other guy is Sasha Sarovsky. Goes out to everything. They're both great ambassadors for the university. Sasha's at every basketball game, there's no doubt. Right. He's one of those guys who gets a standing ovation. The kids know who the soccer coach is, and that's one of the things that makes – Maryland and the crew. The best group of student fans at Maryland are the soccer fans. Yeah. Getting back to the basketball team, it seemed like uh, they're expecting big things from Sikowski and DeMonte Dodd and uh, a greatly improved Jake Lehman and Des Wells. When you start talking about the overall scope of the team, the one thing that you worry about is the reliance on that freshman guard in Romello Trimble. Would you agree, Freddie? Yeah, that's for sure. And, of course, uh, they did add Oklahoma State to the schedule. I don't know what brought that up, on, you know, brought that up but uh, he said, Dustin had said that they wanted a, a really, really tough road game before they opened the season <laughs> at uh, Michigan State. Yeah, Michigan State was not tough enough, so they got to go to Stillwater, Oklahoma. That's one of the toughest places to play in the country. Oh, yeah, they have a great basketball tradition there. Yeah, super place, a, a great record. And uh, so is that's that's the Hank Iba Arena. Iba, Iba, sorry, uh, which is one of the greatest quotes I've ever heard when he was asked about what's the uh, best play he's ever seen, and his answer was South Pacific, and the ball goes in the basket. I've always loved that quote. <laughs> Hank Iba was a great. You know what he was the coach of, Freddie? Do you know? Olympic team. You got it, my friend. He was a coach of the team that lost to Russia in the uh, 72, which Olympic? Seventy two Olympics. 72. Munich, the Munich Olympics. Right, when they, the, the place where time stood still. Right, was right. Yeah. They played the game, I think it was the day after, and it was uh, Doug mm -hmm. Collins and Tom McMillan, and wow, you still remember that game. Sergei yeah. Beloff, was that? Infamous, uh, infamous uh, Olympics there ever was, certainly. Was Sergei Beloff the guy who scored the winning bucket? Uh, that or Yakov Smirnoff. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was Sergei Sergey Beloff, all right? I can't swear to that. But uh, really that was kind of like the beginning of the end of, like it was the beginning of bringing the pros into the Olympics. It didn't happen. The amateurism of uh, United States uh, basketball. Yeah, correct. It's, you know, they should probably go back to it because it would be a lot more exciting if they limited that top age to 22 or 21 than the joke that it's been lately. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's... Well, I was going to say one of your topics about uh, basketball here is you seem pretty sold that the Cavaliers 
are absolutely the team to beat, and I am so looking forward to having the Wizards and the Cavs get into a real rivalry that can last for a couple of years. Yeah, for sure. I mean, the Cavs, to me, are the team to beat now with Kevin Love. That's uh, You throw him with LeBron and uh, uh, Varajeo. Is that saying that right? Varajeo. Kyrie Irving is the big three. Kyrie Irving, right. That's a team. That's a real team. Yeah, and uh, the rivalry with the Wizards is back. Is back because so when LeBron comes to uh, to the Verizon Center, you know, so be it. You'll know, we'll see. Like having Bingo Smith back. Bingo Smith. He hit the winner from the corner. All right, if I remember correctly, against the Wizards. So how are those heat tickets selling down there in Boca? The NBA season uh, coming up. I, I suspect that there's gonna be a lot of seats sold because when they sell seats. It's usually for a couple of year block. It's not a one-year one type of deal. Really? I, I, I didn't know that. I uh, that the crowds would be smaller and the team wins. They'll show, you know. It, it, it's a front-running city, Miami. Uh, Is there any buzz for the Dolphins this year? Not really. No, the, the, the quarterback's still a big question mark. Uh, the, it just, they're not real happy the way that things are going with Tannehill so far in the exhibition season. Hmm. Well, a long way to go. I, I read where Incognito is, like, eligible to come back now. I wonder who will take him. He was visiting Tampa last I heard. It's unbelievable. Hey, you know, they just picked up a guard and a trade earlier this week. From uh, They picked up Logan Mankins from New England. So I guess whenever anybody comes back, like Incognito, I instantly think Oakland Raiders. Yeah, that's where they usually wind up. Uh, there's a good thing on the NFL, what's it called, uh, I uh, forgot what it's called, but the uh, the life thing. The life thing with Al Davis the other yeah. night I saw. Very interesting. Uh, football and, life. Uh, football life, right. Freddie, we're out of time. Thanks a lot for checking in. All right, boys. Have a good week. Good turn. All right. So, Wayne, 38-13 today. Can't wait to get there. going to be a great day. Uh, tailgate. We're going to go to the Rivals tailgate, maybe. Huh? Yeah, I think we will. Scott Green and the guys at Rivals having a big tailgate party out there. I'd like to stop by and say hi to everyone. If you're coming out, of course, wear red, and uh, hopefully we'll see some of our, our fans over at the Rivals Tailgate Park. All right, that will do it for today. See you out at, uh, come and say hello out at uh, Capital One Field at Burns Stadium. This is Bruce Posner for Wayne Viner. We'll see you next Saturday, hopefully with a summary of the victory against James Madison University. Have a good week, everyone. All right, somewhere about four minutes into it.